There we go. Hi, how are you doing? Can you hear me okay? I hear you just fine. Thank you. Good Good to see. We talked earlier, but good to see your face, your beautiful face. Yeah, likewise. Good to see you as well. And it's always good. It's always good to reconnect. I see, I see you got Mumuya back there. So. Oh, all day. Yeah. All day. That's, that's the man. Nice, nice. Yeah. You know, the, the interesting thing um, uh, about that, that painting, a brother uh, did that painting and several other paintings uh, for a music video uh, we did with Tone 7. Uh, okay. And I just had to have that one. Nice. Right. And he's a local local uh, brother, Isao, and uh, just a fantastic artist. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for being on this uh, Zoom session. Uh, I really appreciate your time, you know, and, and really the insights that you'll bring to this conversation. Um, but pretty much, you know, the intention, you know, with Healthy Black Families uh, to do this session is to really get a sense of, you know, what are ways that families that we serve can be thoughtful around the wellness space, around our emotional, our mental well-being, especially right now with COVID-19. Um, so this is actually going to be broadcast through our, you know, social media. This discussion also be broadcast through our website, et cetera. Um, so make sure folks have some really just clear, tangible tools that they can put in their toolbox to be able to, to um, you know, have with them. So um, well, I just thank you for having me. Thank right. you for having me and, and, and considering me in the dialogue. It's an important dialogue. Thank of course. You. you know, you know, and then also to Dr. Jackson, we really, you know, appreciate all your work and the, the tireless, you know, hours you put in over the years to serve, you know, our families and the community at large um and so you know we appreciate all that you do and then as well you know we are really fortunate to be in partnership currently with the association of black psychologists uh, therapists and residency program and so we're really grateful to have sitar with us and supporting our family so we thank you for that introduction as well absolutely yeah so if you could just provide just a very brief introduction for folks who may not be familiar with you and your work that would be really great well um, I'm honored to serve as the current uh, president of the local chapter, Bay Area chapter of the Association of Black Psychologists. Um, and I've been, uh, I've been at this since, what, 1994 uh, uh, um, and uh, came out of uh, grad school in 97, um, just uh, learning about the Bay Area you know, yeah. and richness of the, of the Bay Area. And uh, since that time, I've had varied experiences working with uh, serious mental illness um, and everyday anxiety and people problems and that sort of thing, um, but have been very interested in uh, African-focused uh, uh, therapies or therapies uh, that uh, are couched in an African-centered worldview, um, as opposed to the uh, a Eurocentric worldview, which we fail to name oftentimes, but we that's our default as practitioners. So, um, in in the world of of uh, trying to destroy the mindset of white supremacy uh, and uh, the mindset of black inferiority, uh, we couch our, our therapeutic. Uh, techniques and ideas uh, in in that in that sort of uh, uh, soup in that milieu. Um, I, I've been very interested in in the brain uh, and and in what uh, stress does uh, to uh, us as a people because I know we live under so much stress. You yeah. know, uh, George Clinton wrote uh, a while back what with the rhythm it takes to. Uh, live through what we had to swim, swim through what we had to live through, we could dance underwater and not get wet. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's profound. Yeah, back in, back in the flashlight days and, and all of that, you know. Um, uh, and it is profound, and the, and, and the problem is that we, we do get wet, and stress catches up with us, right, uh, over time. Uh, and it's, you know, it's not fair. You know, and it's not even necessarily our, our fault. Uh, but I became very interested in how to um, uh, uh, 
uh, apply uh, strategies for brain uh, wellness. And I'm very much a student of that. I'm very much a student of black psychology, uh, trying to pair them uh, together, you know? I mean, our, uh, our sense of mind-body um, oneness uh, is an African concept, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it doesn't matter whether it comes from, you know, European neuropsychologist or uh, someone who's an ardent uh, uh, black nationalist. Um, mind body oneness is African. Mm -hmm. And so we need to own uh, our Africanness. And that's what I've tried to do with Prana Mind uh, Center, Prana Mind Center for Brain Wellness, uh, as we as we build and grow. Yeah. And it's just, it's been great. You mentioned the TNRP, Therapist in Residency Program, uh, is a great program. Uh, we're, we're, you know, constantly uh, looking at, at how to, to continue the collaboration and involvement as we train um, our ingangas or providers uh, to deliver services, these courageous conversations uh, from an African-centered per perspective. Yeah, and I, and I really appreciate that. You know, when um, the opportunity came about, when you mentioned it, the t therapist in residency program and our work at Healthy Black Families, you know, I thought that's such a beautiful, you know, uh, connection, right? Because we serve families. We're really fortunate to serve families in various experiences. And we know particularly as Black folks, not only historically, but persistently and presently, the challenges, the traumas, the barriers, the you know, discrimination, the, um, you know, the multiple uh, factors that are impacting our well-being, it's because the uh, trauma and the injury is so persistent, the healing has to be persistent as well. Mm -hmm. you know, so really appreciate the opportunity to have, you know, one of the trainees working with our families and our staff as well, which is really critical. Yes. Um, and particularly right now during this time, right, during COVID-19, there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a high level of anxiety, stress, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, depression, just a lot of factors that um, are very clearly showing up. And, you know, with our work, a huge and integral part of the work of Healthy Black Families is based on social connection, yes. social action, being one in community and, and holding space for one another. That's really key to our work. And right now we're finding ourselves having to be very creative and strategic about how to still serve our families in this present time of need, though we're physically distant. Yes. Uh, I'm curious to know what are maybe, um, what, are, what are your thoughts on that just in general? Well, I've got these phones ringing in the background, so okay. we're going to have to ignore them. Sure, no uh, worries. You know, we, we are an extremely resilient people. Yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. That's right. There is, no, there is no other people who could have gone through what we have gone through and not only survive, but thrive mm -hmm. in this environment. And we'll continue uh, to, to do that. Um, so when I think about um, our, our context, um, I, I use the, the, the five R's um, to, to think about this, this notion of, of context uh, for us. And um, five R's um, is something that uh, Baba Wade Nobles, Dr. Nobles, uh, created um, as um, uh, an opportunity to enhance the family, he calls it the five star family enhancement plan. Uh, and, and, you know, it includes the, the, the notion that in this context, COVID-19, we really got to Zola up on each other. We got to love up on each other. And Zola is a Kikongo uh, term uh, for, for love. So we talk about Zola and up on each other and finding ways to do that. Um, his five R's uh, plan includes to remember, to remind, reframe, revitalize, and to reward, uh, and, and all in the context of, of remembering who we are and whose we are, where we come from, uh, Mother Africa, uh, no matter where we come from in the world, that's, that's our, our home. Um, and um, there, there is uh, so much uh, wellness and resilience that, that is rooted in our spirit. So just to, to remember that uh, and to, 
to constantly uh, remind ourselves of where we are um, uh, in, in this, the context of this society, right? That uh, COVID-19 or anything else does have, uh, carry with it uh, the, the reality of uh, racism and bigotry, right? Uh, but to, to reframe um, the, the uh, forced shelter in place or quarantine in ways that are going to, to serve us, right? That are gonna serve us. And then to, to use that time to revitalize uh, our families and to reward good, uh, good uh, and appropriate uh, behavior. Um, so there are some cons to this um, uh, quarantine or shelter in place, but there definitely are some pros. And I think uh, it behooves us uh, to, to master this uh, as we have mastered uh, other uh, uh, difficulties uh, in our lives. Absolutely. Very well said. Can you repeat the five R's one more time? Absolutely. So the five R's, uh, and, and I'll be more than glad to get this document to you. And also, I'll, I'll say we, we have it on the uh, website. And so you can pull it down from, our, from the chapter uh, website. Um, but they are to remember, to remind, to reframe, to revitalize, and to reward. Okay. I love that. So remember, I see it's a remember, remind. So it's, it's, it's remembers the self-remembering and then the remind to remind others. Is that kind of yeah. the inner, outer? Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Sometimes to remind ourselves, because although we know, <laughs> we know this stuff, Sometimes it's good to, to pick up a book and just reinforce it and go, ah, okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that's critical, right? That reminder and remembering is critical because we know that all too often history repeats itself and there Absolutely. are some patterns that we can start to, to connect, connect the dots. So I think that's, that's really great. Um, so earlier you mentioned um, this piece around brain and, and, and stress. So I'm curious to know, based on your experience and your work, what are... Um, what exactly is going on in the brain? How is the brain impacted when it comes to stress and anxiety? Just so folks have a better sense of that. Well, you know, you know, uh, let me let me answer it in, in this way because there are there are um, there's an impact that happens uh, under quarantine and shelter mm -hmm. in place, even without the. Uh, social political uh, oppression that we deal with related to racism, economic oppression related to racism, poverty related to, to racism. Uh, we carry all of that, the burden of all of that uh, uh, with us uh, going into this, this situation of, of quarantine. Um, and when you look at the research uh, around quarantine, and a lot of research was done around SARS, the SARS virus, um, folks are significantly uh, more likely to report being exhausted, um, feeling detached uh, from others, um, anxiety around dealing with um, uh, our, our elders or folks who are uh, febrile or, 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 or sick. Um, uh, they report uh, irritability, insomnia, um, poor concentration, uh, deteriorating work uh, performance, um, and and you know all those all those aspects of quarantine uh, are important, very important. Um, the the um, issues that um, we see in quarantine uh, can be seen four to six months out of quarantine. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to uh, remember that and to understand that we're, we're in this mental health thing for the longer haul, not just to the end of uh, shelter uh, in place. Um, it, it, it only takes 10 days in quarantine um, to show significantly uh, higher PTSD symptoms, post-traumatic stress symptoms, disorder symptoms, mm. only 10 days. 
So the duration of quarantine uh, is uh, very important. And for many people, we're going on four weeks, right? Or wrapping up four weeks. People carry uh, fears of infection, right? I mean, um, folks oftentimes don't really know, and it's because of the misinformation uh, that's come out, don't really know uh, how um, they can be infected uh, and are afraid that if they sneeze or have a, have a cough or what have you, that it might be corona. And then there are fears around infecting others, right? Um, that we all care, we're concerned with. Um, there's also the frustration and the boredom that goes along with confinement. You know, the, the loss of our routine, um, reduced social contact. And, you know, you mentioned this earlier that, that, you know, we're a collective people. We're used to seeing each other shaking hands or giving each other the hugs and kisses and so on and so forth. All of that has been disrupted, right? Mm -hmm. So th that loss of routine <coughs> is important. And then there are the concerns around inadequate supplies, mm -hmm. having inadequate basic needs. People are concerned around food, water, right? Uh, paper products, all, all that sort of thing. So, you know, these are all very real concerns and the anxiety and the anger uh, that uh, grows out of these concerns uh, can be seen in the research four to six months after uh, quarantine. Yeah. So, yeah. I appreciate you um, naming and itemizing that because that's so important because I think it's important for us, uh, particularly us as, as Black folks and, and Black families that we serve to know that these feelings that you just described or these experiences are very much the normal human response to the stimuli we're receiving, right? From all the things you mentioned from being, you know, sheltered in place and the quarantine, the lack of routine, what what this does to the psyche, to the mind, and to the well-being, um, because there's there's a lot of um, there's a high level of anxiety. Not only I'm noticing in just in conversation with different folks and the experiences, but there's a also kind of fear-centered, pumped-up media messages that's also going out. So there's oh. all of that. Not just, you know, I'm, I'm used to doing this and my everyday routine has been in, in disrupted right now, but I turn on the news and I'm hearing this and on my social media feed, I'm getting that. So the, the high level of consumption of information and messaging that's also feeding right. level of anxiety and stress. So um, I'm just curious, what are some, some, some things that we could be doing um, to really help to mitigate to really help us to stay healthy and well in our, especially in our emotional mental health. Sure. Just what are some, maybe some things we should be incorporating or thinking about? We are always concerned with um, uh, our people being in constant, what's called sympathetic tone. So just to overview, and I know you know this, but you know, there's a range of knowledge around these two central systems, right? Uh, that come out of the uh, peripheral nervous system. We, we, we know that um, we have a sympathetic uh, division and a parasympathetic division. And the sympathetic division is responsible for our fight or flight or freeze response. It keeps us out of danger. It helps us to respond uh, to danger, heightened awareness, hypervigilance, uh, all that stuff, right? Uh, all the things that happen biochemically to prepare us uh, to uh, do what we need to do to survive, right? Uh, and those are all good things um, unless they're triggered constantly. Mm. They're triggered constantly, right? Um, the parasympathetic <coughs> subdivision is supposed to counter the fight or flight system, the sympathetic system. And it counters it, um, bringing us back to a state of balance or homeostasis, right, or calm. It helps to calm out that system. Mm -hmm. And so when those, again, mind, body, oneness, when those uh, systems are aligned, they're working properly, 
we can respond to danger. Uh, and then once the danger is over, uh, our system can calm. However, our people are uh, constantly uh, experiencing threat, right? And it's what we have to work on on a daily basis, just uh, finding these experiences of calm, uh, being, being loving with each other so that we represent uh, uh, calm to each other uh, and the outside world can do what it, it does, right? We're dependent on that with each other. Just, you know, there's a lot more we can say that about, about uh, vibration and energy and what we bring to the, to the table for each other, especially in confined spaces, right? Um, but when uh, we're bombarded uh, with uh, threats, um, we can stay in what's called sympathetic tone, uh, which involves a high release of cortisol, uh, maintaining that, that, that release, um, uh, you know, as well as other cortical steroids that really do damage if they stay around. Uh, and the kind of damage they do can be seen, long story short, in Alzheimer's in you know, memory related issue, issues, in, in um, uh, various neurodegenerative disorders, right? Um, and what we try to do is help uh, assess that, make people aware of it, uh, and then you know, kick in some, some ideas, some things uh, to do uh, that can stem that, that, that tide, right? And so they may be, um, uh, you know, health-related sort of supplementation and, and, and nutrient support. Uh, they, there may be, they may be exercises um, uh, and, and uh, you know, there might be other, other strategies that we use. Um, and for example, <clears throat> what um, I, I highly recommend uh, are the use of, uh, I like supplementation. So the use of bioflavonoids, the use of botanicals, the use of antioxidants, right? To help protect uh, the brain, right? Uh, vitamin C uh, in that lane is a, is a really good um, uh, antioxidant uh, and a supporter of our immune system, right? It's like vitamin C uh, helps put out uh, fires uh, all, over the, all over the system. Um, so I, I like vitamin C. It's inexpensive. I think we all should be on it. Vitamin A and D, and vitamin A is really not a, a vitamin, but we call it uh, a, a vitamin. Uh, they are really, really important. And, and most uh, of us, most black folk, uh, we don't uh, have enough vitamin D. Our vitamin D levels tend to be uh, low. And partly that's because we need more vitamin D than everybody else. And especially it's geographic. If you're not hanging out in Jamaica all the time where the sun is shining and it's warm, so on and so forth, and you're in the Bay Area, we have some real foggy days, some rainy days. It's great when the sun is shining, but we don't get it, you know, 24-7, 365. So it becomes very important for African-American people and African people to uh, supplement with vitamin D um, and not D2 but D3 and and um, uh, you know there, there's some 60 odd different processes biochemical processes that D uh, is involved in in our in our brain system so uh, very important uh, when it comes to botanicals uh, echinacea I like a lot because of its strong uh, upper respiratory effects um, especially uh, during this, this uh, um, issue with uh, the virus. Uh, and <clears throat> taking in antioxidants uh, are a really good idea. Acai, uh, ACIA, uh, blueberry, raspberry, uh, um, all, they're all high in flavonoids. Um, but the other thing that we really need to pay attention to uh, during this period and ongoing, but, but definitely during this period. And I, and I can tell you that most of the elder brothers that come to see me in, in our practice have this one issue, and that is sleep. Mm. You know, brother, I can't sleep. Uh, so we have to pay attention to our sleep hygiene 
one of the number one things we can do to release endogenous opioids, right, endorphins, is to sleep uh, properly. Uh, and so it becomes very important to maintain uh, our schedule uh, during this, um, this virus uh, outbreak um, <clears throat> to, to, to keep busy, to maintain the, the schedule, all that kind of stuff. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into some of, the, some of the things we can do just under, under quarantine uh, in, a, in a minute. Um, but just to, to stay in this vein of, of uh, nutrition and, and exercise, I'd like to see us all really uh, pay attention to high sugar diets because high sugar uh, diets uh, absolutely shut down the immune system, right? They shut down, they can shut down our natural killer T cells uh, for hours. So it's something we really need to pay attention to. And along with that is to avoid being dehydrated. So, you know, really drink, drink water. And it's different, the hydration is different for different people. I think it depends on our height, weight, body size, uh, all, all that stuff. Uh, some people say eight uh, glasses a day. Some people, um, um, some Australians say far less. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I like the idea of six to, to eight uh, glasses a day. And, you know, uh, it could be water, it could be in teas or, or you know, whatever the case is. So to, to, to not be dehydrated, that, that becomes uh, very uh, important. You know, th there's a whole area of psychology called psychoneuroimmunology uh, that looks at um, our mental state and how it impacts our immune system. Um, so we really need to, to, to tend to that. Um, um, and, and I'd like to, you know, when it comes to, to exercise, um, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, going out playing three whole court games, basketball and so on and so forth. Just getting our heart rate up uh, is, is a good idea when it comes to, to exercise. <clears throat> I like HIIT training, high intensity interval training. Um, I do it on the bike. Um, and, you know, I do a, about a 20 minute uh, to 25 minute uh, workout, uh, alternating, you know, speeds and that sort of thing, just intensity, uh, try to break a sweat, uh, that can be very important. And under quarantine, uh, or, or uh, shelter in place, uh, you know, we need to be getting uh, exercise on the daily or at least four or five uh, days a week, you know, very important. But there are some particular exercises that uh, I'm going to tell you, and they're going to seem odd and funny, but um, they're, they're awfully good to do, and they're brain exercises, right? One of them, uh, in order to stimulate our parasympathetics, um, is to gargle. Mm. Something we can do simply, gargle all the way at the back of our throat, right? to the point where we almost gag ourselves. So what are we doing? We're triggering the gag reflex. Um, we can also, while we're watching TV, during commercials, uh, take uh, tongue depressors uh, and stick that in the back of our throat and gag. Now, you know, you gotta be careful. You don't wanna, you know, throw up or anything like that, but uh, just to stimulate the gag reflex several times while the commercial is on, and then go back to your regular viewing. And what does that do? I'm gonna ask you, so could a spoon be used for those who don't have a ton? A ton? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think about like resources, yeah. Yes, a spoon could be used, definitely. Just be careful with it because it's so hard uh, and you don't want to, uh, the reflex is a reflex. So some re people reflex differently uh, and I, I wouldn't want anyone to hit their tooth. Um, with, with a spoon, but you know, even a plastic one would, would be great to use. Um, and, and when you think about gagging, what happens is our eyes tear up, right? And so if we can gag to the point where our eyes are tearing up, uh, we know that we're triggering our parasympathetic. And it's almost like, you know, using jumper cables on a car <laughs> where, you know, we're triggering uh, our parasympathetic uh, uh, system. Uh, because that system is a system of rest and digest, right? Um, and that's what we want to do. 
we can also um, sing loudly. I mean, sing, it, it doesn't matter whether it's, uh, you know, you like Arias or Bob Marley, right? Uh, and a few days ago, I threw on some Bob Marley here and had my own little concert, and it was cranked up, nice. you know, <laughs> absolutely, until the philosophy, right? I mean, you know, I was, we were gigging. <laughs> Uh, and, and just to the top of our, our lungs, it also helps to stimulate the parasympathetics. Um, and that's what we want to do, because when we're stimulating the parasympathetic system, uh, we are helping to counter uh, the, uh, the, the idea of being in sympathetic tone so much. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you another, there's some quick exercises we can do that just help with brain coordination um, uh, our brains need to work out just as much as our bodies need to work out. Uh, and you can just do, if you see my hands here, what I'm doing, right, is I'm just alternating with the index finger while putting the thumb up. Now the thumb has to be up. It can't be like this, right? So the thumb has to be up. But you'll find that once you start doing it, you can go quicker and quicker and quicker, right? And I can tell you that it's more difficult than it looks. It's something that just seems very, very simple, right? But just do it until you get the hang of it uh, and keep doing it, right? Good for coordination. Um, a, another great uh, brain exercise, and you know, all these things can be done just in one confined place. It doesn't take a basketball court, is to, to um, spread our arms out and, and one palm should be up and the other palm should be down, right? But the arm should be 